Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Curious Conversations with Sandra Meehan. First of all, I'd just like to thank everyone who joins us and who supports us over here on My Time TV. We really, really appreciate your support, um, for, uh, as, as well as our guests um, enjoy your support and appreciate your support. We have an amazing guest today, and we're going to be talking about women's health. So, and mental health, more importantly, why it's so important for you to take care of your brain health. And especially in a time of, as we age, but start looking after it a little bit earlier. So I'm just going to give you a rundown on my guest today, Kate, and I've got to read this off. So please excuse me because my computer, my printer isn't working this morning. It's run out of ink and I haven't had time to go and get some more. So who is um, who, who's Kate? Kate um, Kunkel has enjoyed many careers, but her most important job developed from her desire to prevent the devastation that dementia wrought to her mother from happening to anyone else. Kate has made it her life's work to educate, empower everyone to shape their bodies and improve their health in order to save their brains. Kate believes it is never too late to look after your brain, but Kate warns it can become too late. Her latest book, Don't Let Memories Fade, was released on September the 12th. And anyone that follows me over on Beano and Chat with Sandra Meehan would know that I've spoken to Kate before and we've chatted on this subject and I invited Kate back to talk on, on this subject again on Curious Conversations um, with Sandra because I personally believe it's a really, really important topic for us all to talk about, especially as women, because we don't look after not only our brain health, but we don't look after any part of our health first. We don't put ourselves first. So um, without any further ado, I'm going to bring Kate up. Just give it a little bit of time. How are you going, Kate? Oh, good, good. I'm so excited to be here again and I actually have a picture. Woo <laughs> yeah, I don't think, yeah, we did we have a picture last time? No, it didn't work. That's why I was like, you've got to be kidding me. It can't happen again. <laughs> yeah, so last time I had to, um, I, 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 Kate and I chatted with, um, she didn't have a picture. We just had audio and the same problem popped up this morning and we didn't go into, we just like, okay, all right. And we just kept refreshing and doing all sorts of stuff uh, and um, up, up pops um, the beautiful image of Kate, which I'm really, really grateful for. Oh, thank you, universe. So welcome <laughs> yes. to the show, Kate. It's amazing. Um, it's amazing to have you here. And we've got um, Adair, beautiful Adair, who actually is the um, the founder of My Time TV. Um, and she's right. How are you? This is a fab topic. Great to see you exploring it. Liz, this would be of interest to you as well. So, yeah, it is a great topic. And it's it's really important that we do explore it and do have a um have an understanding of our, our our brain health and why it's so important because we have such a i know my daughter works in aged care and she said and rebecca says you know to me mum there's so many people with dementia and just what she's seeing even in aged care it's becoming younger and younger and younger yes. and you can start to see the signs of it coming up in people where they don't remember things or they're repeating things over and over again at a really really early age and you know we take it for granted i know my my ex-husband says you know i've got a bad memory and i'm like well that's just it that's that's just we'll do something about it you know try and try, but it's yeah. just like it's an excuse some people use an excuse but some people actually have bad memories through the way that they've eaten the chemicals mm. the water everything that's associated in our busy busy so-called um lives where we've been dumbed down integrated with with stuff and the other day i found out the chemtrails have actually got smart had smart uh -huh. And that was just like, oh, my God, you know, and then the 5G that was going to come in and how that was going to affect us. And, you know, I think this is the reason why um, I'm not going to get too political here, but I think this is the reason why so many people can't actually see what's been going on because their, their brain and their body has been, been filled with so much shit 
and that's the word I'm going to use so much. Um, You're right. You're absolutely right. The 5G is a big concern. We have a neighbor here. I'm in Ecuador and we have a neighbor here who's a brilliant engineer. And he has told me, his, he's really informed me a lot about the dangers of that. And he actually had uh, Lyme disease many years ago. And they just installed a 5G tower in our area. And he is starting to uh, have tremors that he hasn't had in years. And he's convinced it's from the 5G, you know, because it's like a Parkinsonian uh, tremor. So it's it's a big concern for all of us. And in Guay Guayaquil, which is the biggest city close to me here in Ecuador, it had the highest number of COVID cases. And at the time, it was the only place in Ecuador that had 5G. Well, it, my, my intel, because I... Um, I I'm all over the place and I talk, yeah. I talk to many, many people and what I've been told by more than one, these are people that are in the know that the 5G, as it was known, has been switched off. What's ah. the, the, the 5G towers will now be known as Tesla towers, Tesla coils, <sighs> and they, they will actually be healing it's a, a vibe, it's all magnetic and it, it, it goes on a figure eight. So when they are switched on, it's actually they're healing the planet and they're healing people. And it's, it's, it, they vibrate and you can do your research on Tesla energy. It vibrates at 432 hertz, um, which is what the earth vibrates at. So that's what I've been told of very, by people in Australia, people in America, people in Mexico. There's people that I know that I talk to and um, they're in the know. They talk that they, they they know what's go, go, going on around the world, and this is what they've told me, and I've heard it from hmm. very different sources. Hmm. Very interesting because I've heard exactly the opposite. But you know what? That's the problem. Yeah. All of the information is so befuddled, and and it depends who you're listening to and where their sources are, and. And, and I'm sure that it's different in different countries. I'm sure that they're messing around with it. But um, it is affecting our brains. There are so many things. I, I had a television program for nine years in the United States, and we talked a lot about um, chemtrails. The chem yeah. the, and um, with aluminum and barium and all the things that are in that, and the aluminum and the fluoride that's in our water, in the horrible stuff that's in our air um the glyphosate and everything it's no wonder you said your daughter worked in, in long-term care and so many more people are coming in younger and younger with brain problems and that is no surprise to me at all because we are not we just can't handle all that toxic overload it is impacting our gut it is impacting our brain it's it's impacting every part of us why do you think do you know how many little kids get cancer now? I mean, hmm. when I was a kid, I didn't know one child who had cancer, not one. And now it seems like every fourth or fifth child has cancer or ADHD or something. So it's, I believe that we are going, and as they get older now, what's going to happen with their brains? Our generation, I'm, well, I'm a baby boomer and my generation is the first generation to have a younger age than the generation before of cognitive decline. So yeah. we are also the first generation to live with this chemical soup and this um, electromagnetic soup and so many other things, the glyphosate and all of those things. And we also, husband and wife both worked lots of convenience foods, lots of those things. It's no surprise at all that our age group, my age group anyway, I'm 62. And mine. And, mine. <laughs> and, 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 the, and the younger ones now too, the younger the, the younger ones too, they, 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 they work because they have to, to make ends meet. But yes, too, of course. Yeah, because it's impossible for most people to have a, a family make it with just one income anymore. It, it astounds me how... I, you know, our, our, my peers, my mom was the only one who worked and it was the only because she couldn't stand being home. She got bored to tears. <laughs> so she went out, but my mom just died of dementia in January or yeah, December, December 29th with dementia. 
she worked in a chemical factory. She worked at a place called Hoover Chemicals in the town where we grew up. They made the foam and the car, seat, car seats. So imagine those chemicals, you're breathing that in eight hours a day, five days a week with no protection at all. So it's, it's really not much of a shock that she had cancer and eventually dementia. Yeah, I worked, um, I worked in for, for BHP Billiton in Townsville in a cobalt, um, a, it was a copper, they, they processed, made cobalt and, and, and copper and that, and we used to have to walk around the plant and look after, I looked after the training and, and safety aspect of one part of the plant. And I know that when we, I went into a certain part of the plant, I had to actually wear a, a full, a full mask. And like, it was, it was I, I used to choke on it because I felt so um, claustrophobic, but I would see guys, I'd have to pull them up because they, they're working and they're sweating and the, the ring around their, the, the green of the copper and that around mm. their mouth. Yeah. And I know, yeah, it's, it's, it's like they're breathing it in and nothing stop. You can't stop it because it's in the air. As soon as the yeah. wind, you're breathing it, you may not be able to see it. And my ex-husband worked it. He worked in, because we we're in mining for, for a long, long time. And he worked in mining and there was a couple, a few mines that he would never work in. He just said, no, I won't work in them. But I used to have to wash his clothes. So all that dust and everything, you'd pick them up and mm -hmm. you're still breathing it in and the kids are breathing sure. it in. But, you know, um, it's like... We we just we don't know what's out there, and we um and it's it's time to become for each of us to become responsible um for for our own health for what we put in our mouths and you know that to me there's no such thing as organic food because you may grow yeah. it and it may you may not spray it but it can't be totally organic yeah. because of what's in our skies what's already in our earth so we have to do the best that we can and and yeah take food from where we believe. And I think that's even um, growing it in your backyard, which is something that we've started to do. We've got a small yeah, yard, we've got little veggie pods that's got covers and that on it. Doesn't stop the air from getting in, but I know that it's got no chemicals in it added to it because right. I'm growing right. it. And I think we, yeah. we've forgotten, we've become so busy that we have not um, we've got away from what's important in our lives. And Rebecca and I were discussing this this morning, how we've got so far away from being in line with our soul, with money, with television, with that that, that sense of community of, of swapping, you know, lemons for apples or what, you know, you'd catch fish and you'd, your neighbour would always come bring you over something. We've got so far away from who we truly yeah. are as, as um, spirits and, and as people that now it's it's all about money, 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 making money, um, putting ourselves out there as um, I've got more than anybody else, and we've, yeah. <laughs> we've been we've been brainwashed into thinking that the more we have, the more we're going to be respected. But that's that's just not the case. No. We're totally away, and Sandra. From Exactly. I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean yeah. to interrupt. I, I was agreeing, like one of the big things that keeps the world spinning like it is now is just consumerism. That's why they always talk about growth and, and you need to have a 2% growth or an 8% growth or whatever that is. But all that means is people are spending more money on stuff. And that means that the planet is being raped. The, the, the soil is being depleted. It means the animals are being mistreated. It's, it's all of that. It's just consumerism. It's not sustainable, I really don't think. There's a, a question up there, Adair. Is it okay if I answer yeah, that yeah, that's please, coming yeah. up? That's why I put them up there so you can answer them. And, yeah, get, please get right. involved in the, in, in, in the conversation. So this is a right. two-way thing, Kate. So Right. So, Adair, yes. Fasting is hugely important and, and, and intermittent fasting, but even because a lot of people have difficulty doing that, but we can do what's like a, a kind of fasting an intermittent fasting that is basically time restricted eating. So like myself, I only eat for eight hours a day. Like I have that period of time in which I can eat. So 16 hours a day, I only drink water. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly. <laughs> Once in a while, I'll have a beer. I admit it. But um, tea, uh, like clear tea and water. Um, when we let our, our um, stomachs do their thing and we let all of those nutrients get to where they need to go, it takes a while 
for them to be incorporated into our bodies. And our brains need to have time to get rid of the trash that comes from just being alive all day and from the food because it's still, I mean, everything, the, the body is completely interconnected. People like to think the brain's separate, but it's not. It's all connected, you know, the gut and the brain, they even call the gut the second brain. So yes, when we go into a state of, of ketosis is basically what happens when we do um, time-restricted eating, not only do we burn fat, so that's a good way to lose weight as long as you're smart about it, but also it, it uh, inspires something called autophagy. And that's when our brain actually cleans out the, the, the cells and all the trash. And that's also why it's so important to have good sleep because that same thing that happens when you're on time-restricted eating happens during sleep. If we don't get the right number of cycles of sleep, the right kind of sleep, autophagy can't happen. And if that can't happen, then your brain starts to recognize all of that trash in your brain as an invader. And what happens then is that our body goes into immune protect, like into a protection mode. Those plaques and tangles we've all heard about from Alzheimer's, those are just proteins coming into place to protect our brains. It's our body's immune system. Some of us get autoimmune diseases like MS, like RA. Others develop the plaques and tangles that are Alzheimer's. It's an immune system trying to respond. And so if we don't sleep, if we don't, if we eat every minute of every day, like how many people do you know, just like they're chowing on something all the time, they're never without food. So it, it it's really hard for your brain to clear out from all that. So yes, the short answer, my very long short answer is yes, fasting does help. But it's also got to do with sleep. That's also very important. Yeah, and um, I was in a in a talk a couple of years ago and, I, and I've chatted with Annie, Annie Clark on, on Vino and Chat. And Annie's a big believer when you were just talking about food and driving, um, she's a big believer with gluten. She said gluten mm. when you, uh, should is just as bad as drink driving. So eating anything that's filled with gluten, that's got gluten while you're driving and on long drives can actually make you go to sleep. It makes you feel drowsy. And she's, and, and Annie said there should be a test to see if people have eaten gluten in a lot of accidents <laughs> because a lot of people that, that, that do do long, dri long drives because um, we've got open roads here in Australia. Right. A lot of accidents on not like every day just driving around right. the, your, your suburb these are long for, for long drives she is a big believer that you just have water or fruit or no yeah. um no hot chips no um no. no processed food she said be very mindful of what you're you're eating on a long drive because it does make you tired it does switch your it does something to your brain so she's um yeah. she, she's a big advocate for for, for for that and i had never ever heard of it before until annie mentioned it and then I um, thought I'm going to test this out. So I, I was, we were driving to Townsville and I thought, well, I'm actually not driving. I'm actually in the passenger seat. I'm going to have something that's got gluten in it. And I could feel my energy levels just going down and down and yeah. down. I actually had to, uh, <laughs> I fell asleep in the car and I don't fall yeah. asleep in the car. And it was just yeah. like, wow, this is what it, this is what it does, food does to us. We've got to be really careful on what we do put into our mouths, but not only put into our mouths, I think it's really important that we look at what we put, what deodorants we use, oh, what yeah. washing powders we use, um, what cleaners we're using around the house, what clothes, um, where, where um, you know, somebody said to me the other day, um, do you mind, I bought something and they said, would you like sauce on that? Like it was a vegan thing and they had, went to hand me, I said, that stuff's going to kill you. You know, like anything we can yeah. buy off the shelf in oh. the supermarket is just full of numbers. It's full of um, colours and what we do not do as human beings, we do not take responsibility and ask what is in that. So if yeah. you know, if I was to come to your place for dinner or whatever, I wouldn't say what's in it. 
what have you put in it? We just eat right. it because we we have that. We just we just it, most of the time we just eat it. Or if we go yeah. out, we don't ask. Has it has have you put processed stuff in it? Is it got you know? <laughs> we don't ask a doctor what is in this medicine that you're giving us. Is this healthy for me or whatever? We just we've just become so used to letting others take responsibility for yeah. us, and we're not taking responsibility for ourselves and. It's not society's problem that we have it's these ours. It have these health issues. It comes back to self and self awareness. I have to yes, self. People say that, you know, the, the common wisdom or the popular wisdom is that Alzheimer's, if you have the gene, the APOE4 gene, chances are you're going to get Alzheimer's. But there are lots of people who don't have the gene who get it and lots of people who have the gene and don't get it. So obviously it's not just a genetic thing. It is mostly a lifestyle disease. 70% of dementia and Alzheimer's could be stopped, could be prevented with lifestyle changes. But that, like you said, that means you have to work really hard. You can't just let someone else look after you because they're not going to know. When you said about going to someone's house, we have a little Italian restaurant here that I just love. And we're, we're trying to support them because they were closed so long. I'm not really fond of eating out that much because it's really hard for me because I don't do gluten and I'm totally vegan. And this is Ecuador and it's a little hard here to be vegan in Ecuador, I have to tell you. But I, I called my, my friendly neighborhood Italian restaurant guy and I said, if I bring special noodles, will you cook them for me so that I can have your wonderful mushroom sauce? And he said, of course. So it took me to, to make that call to, to bring the noodles to say, I don't want to have that gluten because I, I just can't tolerate it. And let's do that. When you talked about gluten, that's very interesting because, yes, it does impact um uh, our energy levels, partly because of the carbohydrates, because it, you, you know you crash, you, you zing and crash, but it's also it's inflammation, right? All those wheat products, uh, most grains actually cause inflammation, and inflammation has an effect on our gut. It has an effect on our brain. It has an effect on our joints. So that's part of that uh, thing as well with gluten because of the inflammation part. Yeah, it's really interesting to see how um, how difficult it is to get people to take that step. I do private coaching and I also I'm just starting a group for the first time. I've never done a group pro pro program before, but it's starting at the end of September. And I had to start really easy because when I when I get people, yeah, I want to I want to protect my brain. I have to do that. I don't want to go like my mom did. But then when you say, well, you can't have potato chips anymore. And that's just like, what do you mean? I can't have crisps anymore. Because, but they don't understand that that is directly related. They think it's still veggies, right? It's, you know, <laughs> and even if it's fried and supposedly good oil, it's fried and it's got salt on it and preservatives and all those things. So, I mean, I'm a, I'll tell you what, I'm a potato chip junkie. If I had one weakness, it is potato chips. I haven't had any in probably a year and a half. That's really hard for me because I love those things. But, you know, I also know that it's not good for me and I do not want to travel the road my mom traveled. Yeah, and I think until we've um, had to go down that road and this is where um, it's it's a time now in in, um, in for humanity that when something happens in our life and we learn from that, it's time then to bring that awareness. I'm not going to say awakening, but that awareness to others. It's time for, yeah. for all of us to stand up and, and help others and, and, and shine our voice out there and say, hey, this, this and this and this, no matter how you do it, you're still shining that, that, that light onto the subject. And dementia is something that I personally, um, I, it hasn't really touched my my life as such um, in, in, in a massive way, uh, but I've seen it. I've seen the signs of it, and it's just like it, I, if I had ever got to, I wouldn't want to have dementia. I would rather just just leave the planet. That's yeah. Uh, but I with um, technology that's coming in, 
soon and it, dementia will be a thing of the past but in the meantime until these patterns and everything that have been um, suppressed come out we have to deal with it in the here here and the now and a lot of people are going that are in my area my line of work go well we'll just wait for these med beds to come out but in the meantime we can't we've, we've the problems now and it's what we can do in the here and the now to to yeah. survive it to prevent it we can't rely on technology to to eradicate it it's responsibility right here and right now living in the now there's no use looking to the future it's like what no. we do right right now so for for women why do you think women um sort of just don't look after their health well it's it's you, there are so many things going on here firstly um i know a lot of women who feel guilty when they take time to look after themselves self-care it's like they they think they're going to be perceived as selfish so that's part of it and we do have more bottom line if you have kids especially generally speaking you're going to carry more of the weight of child rearing it's the way it is um even if you have a really supportive husband it seems that even even with the people i know they um the women have more of that so that means that you have less time to do the exercising it has less time to do the meditation and all of those things that are important however the big what i've been really pushing in the last seven or eight months is that for women it's even more important for brain health to do those things to look after yourself because you know after age 65 we are twice as likely to develop dementia as men twice so that's pretty scary and if you have diabetes you're you're like almost three times more likely to um, get dementia as a woman than as a man with diabetes after age 65. so that means we've got a lot of um uh, things against uh, uh, stacked up against us already so diabetes is one thing that we have to really look after but the other thing is stress we just women um, process stress differently than men do. Our, cord, our our hormones are react differently to stress. We hold on to cortisol. You know how notice how many women when we get stressed it settles right here. Well, that's a cortisol, and that is where we we hold it. But that's also bigger belly, smaller brain. It's it's not a anything to do about eating. It's about the fact that when we have a bigger belly probably due to stress, probably due, partly due to lack of sleep because women often have sleep problems. So all of those things together really mean that we have to take the time and look after our diets, look after getting enough sleep, figuring out ways to reduce stress or at the very least to handle it better, to acknowledge it and to take the steps with meditation, with whatever we need to do yoga qigong whatever it is that we decide works for us to reduce that stress to make it to deal with it in a healthy way the other thing that women don't women tend to have a lot of emotional mental health issues like depression women have depression a lot anxiety that we have a bigger percentage of getting that both of those things are related to gut health so if you if you are depressed, you're not as likely to look after yourself, right? You're just not going to. But that means it's going to make the depression worse because when your gut is unhealthy and you're stressed and you're not sleeping, then it gets worse. It's this vicious cycle. And then depression is actually one of the biggest, another big risk factor for dementia. So this whole thing, it's just this big circle. And when you say about looking after ourselves, women have to... I would like to see women stop thinking that looking after themselves is a selfish thing. The whole society needs to, to go there because, you know, we have to do this because without us, a lot of stuff doesn't get done. <laughs> you know, we have to look after us. Yeah, and um, I like that that you um, you said all of society because even even men don't look after really look after themselves because we're living in this we we have been taught in um from children that 
putting yourself first, especially our age group, I wouldn't say the modern age group that's coming up now, the children that are being born, because there, there has been a shift in the way that people, there's more conscious parents, they're consciously right. parent, um, parenting their children a little bit differently. But um, yeah, it was just like, you just didn't do it if you if you looked after yourself or put yourself first or you said that you loved yourself you were thought of as if you were up yourself or if you were being selfish you um you should be a martyr and we have learned this it's been passed down especially women um from generation to generation to generation from mother or it goes way 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 back where we just we were just thought of well women just do that you're here to serve and yes we are here to serve everyone's here to be of service but we're here to be of service first to ourselves because as yeah. the airplane crashes and the oxygen mask comes down if you don't put it on yourself you can't help your children you can't help exactly. anybody else and that I love is, that analogy. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and that's where, you know, self-love and self-worth and looking after oneself is your birthright. It's what you're here to do. And when you can when you can start to do that, then you can start to truly look after and be that light for others. But I'd like to take it one step back when you like as women, Kate, as women, and like you said, that we we do more things in the home and child rearing. We we do, and the most important thing that we are responsible for is the food that our children eat. Yes, indeed, uh, we are. So we, as mothers, uh, um, or grandmothers, or aunties, or whatever, most women, most children are brought up and are fed. Most of the time, the mother is the one that is responsible. There's so many single mums around and, oh. you know, we're so responsible for what our children eat and in teaching good food habits. And there is a lot around ADD and ADHD and, and all with children and, and what my own son had, um, had that. But and we, when we went down the food path and different things that he couldn't eat, we kept him off coke and, and a whole host of stuff. His behaviour settled. But when we look at things that we're born with and what generations are, are born with and children are born with, it's chemicals that are coming down through from generation to generation because all that comes in through the placenta. So we, we, as as women that and that. Um, that have children, we actually are passed through whatever's in our grandmother's blood, all that comes into the mother's and then comes into ours and then go, then we build it up again and then it goes into our our, our, our children. And it's okay. that's how I that's just this is just my own <laughs> personal belief that I believe that's why it's got worse because we've just it's just been added to and added to and added to and added to until we get to the point you've got to say enough's enough. We've got, we've got to start to cleanse all, all, all this out. Our, our great-grandmothers didn't have dementia. But no. Our, I, um, you know, I know. Our, mothers, our mothers are dying from it. Our fathers are dying from it. But very few, if you go back past the, the last generation, like our, our parents, and go into our grandparents' generation, they didn't have dementia. There's very, you never heard of it. You never heard of dementia or Alzheimer's and that. It's become a modern day, um, yeah. a modern day thing. <laughs> as, as we got through this modern day thing, we've got computers and I've seen what um, phones can do to you, not, not just what, um, but like we've got Facebook, we've got YouTube, we've got Twitter, we've got all of this. All these things are programmed that we don't even know about because they're programmed to make you want to be there and, and, and be on it all the time. And we're now sticking our children. Um, my generation oh. would stick their children in front of a TV. You know, they're quiet. Yep. And we don't know what what's being programmed through that TV. Now it's it's not only TV, it's computers, it's computer games, it's a whole host of things. And as um, we had only had gambling before and we had alcohol and we had drugs. But now we've got all these other things that are addictive and that are controlling and affecting our minds and our children's minds. And, and a lot of that, like I noticed a lot of people using like the phones and the tablets as babysitters, even at a family, like outing at a restaurant. I can't tell you how many times, even here, in Ecuador, I see people hand their phones to the little babies that are maybe 18 months old. The kids can run those things better than I can, which is really scary. But but that's part of it. That, so the, 
the screen, the blue, the blue light is, is a problem. And it does affect how their brain develops. So we know that kids who are exposed to more than, and I don't remember the number of hours, but if they're exposed to more than a certain number of hours before they're three, they have this chance of developing ADHD. I mean, it's, it, there are all kinds of things that can affect the brain just from the screens themselves. But what that also means is that they are being, like you said, programmed to want the stuff that is advertised. Like when we wanted, like I, I grew up in Canada and I can remember the commercial and it's so crazy because I don't even like Cocoa Puffs, but there was a bird or something that said, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs and, and Count Chocula and things like that. It really hasn't changed. And no. now it's with them all the time. It's not just for the, you know, for the time they're on television, they're watching television. <clears throat> but then we as parents, the food that we're eating is also influenced by what we're being exposed to. So like I'm seeing all this stuff with this fake meat now. Mm. This fake meat is not good. It is processed. Uh, one uh, one brand in particular used genetic genetically modified foods, which are like absolute stay away from that crap. And and but I see so many people. I belong to a, a couple of vegan groups on Facebook, and these people are all excited about these meat crumbles and these, these this fake meat. And I go on there and I say, please, please, for the love of God, stay away from that stuff because it will. It's just poison. It's just preservatives. And it's, we don't even know really what's in there. So we are, and then we think, okay, even if you're trying to do a good job and, and clean up the diet and you think that being vegan is that, but vegan is not always healthy, only if it's whole foods and only if it's, it's plant-based, that's a whole different ball game than being vegan because Oreos are vegan. Did you know that Oreo cookies are vegan? <laughs> <laughs> so we are also being conditioned though like you see all this stuff beyond meat and whatever though that other crap is that it's good for us and so we cook it we feed it to our children thinking that that's being good for them but it's not it's it's just training them to eat more processed stuff i love that you've got a garden we tried but the possums ate everything <laughs> in our garden <laughs> Little stinkers, they ate everything. <laughs> well, these these are these are veggie pods, and you can buy. I think you can you can buy them all over the world. They are an Australian based company, and they're like two meters by one meter, and they come with a cover that no animal can get into. Oh, and that's, I that's, don't need that. <laughs> and that's why we've got we've got two. We bought them because we didn't want the cat. The cat would get in and dig it use it as a toilet so we bought this veggie pod yeah it's two meters um long by a meter wide and that, it, it's got its own ir irrigation they're called wicking beds and they're at oh yes yes yeah so they're i don't have to bend over to 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 to, to garden and they're on a um you can get smaller ones or big you know smaller ones as well and they're just great because they keep oh. the, the weeds out. They keep everything out, and you just yeah. So that's why we've got um, we we bought them, and we've just put in um, ten citrus trees in pots because so, we're in a rented property oh. um, around around the house. And it's just I don't know why we we've, we've sort of got don't know why we've done this, but we've done it. Obviously, it's good idea. Um, yeah, it's an idea, and 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 we've just done it. But getting back to that processed vegan shit <laughs> that pretends to be meat um like we're we're basically mainly um plant-based but you know we i do a little bit of fish and that uh but what happens is we're programmed to hear the word healthy yeah when we hear oh this is healthy for you it's nlp language it's marketing yes. language what can I do? Let's jump on the bandwagon. And now because all of a sudden there's a lot of talk around vegan, veganism and vegan food and vegetarian and that. So a lot of these companies are actually owned by the same companies that own the meat. And they yep. just put something yep. different out. Yeah, it's like going to, I think, at McDonald's or there's Kentucky Fried Chicken. I don't know. One of them, they've got a vegan oh. base. You know, I follow a chef um, myself, a vegan chef called Chef Cynthia Louise, 
And, oh, I know Cynthia. Yeah, I mean, I, and, I, I also know her. Yeah. yeah and I've, I've, I've bought a lot of her cooking classes and her online cooking classes. And she's all for um, you don't eat that stuff if you, you, you make it yourself. And she shows anybody that, that says, I can't do it, should just jump on and follow her, her recipes on YouTube. And it's so easy and yet they're so damn tasty and you wouldn't, you don't even miss the meat in it. You can hide your vegetables in it. You can hide um, so much for the kids that they wouldn't even know that it's in there unless you told them. You told but them. what happens is we have allowed our children or our grandchildren to tell us they're not going to eat something. Yeah, yeah oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, my grandkitties eat what I feed them. When I get to see them, what Oma makes, they eat. Absolutely. Have you tried the, um, this is something that I, while we're on that subject, a lot of people don't realize that the, the very things that can make the, the, the vegan meat, the homemade stuff, are the very things that help our brain. So like walnuts are very yep. common and, and mushrooms. Those are two of the best things you can eat for your brain. So if you're making like vegan taco meat, I make it all the time. And even my carnivore husband, I haven't been able to get him off meat yet. I'm working on it. But um, he even likes the vegan meat that I make with, with mushrooms and um, walnuts. And it's amazing what you can do by, by even making this pretend meat that is, is actually beneficial fading your brain even more than just the fact that it's a vegetable like there are some things and i and i list a whole bunch of them in in my book that are specifically really good for reducing inflammation for helping um uh, re-establish the blood brain barrier because that that's been disturbed for a lot of people fixing uh leaky gut and and it's so you know if you just take the time and like you're so smart to get that you know to take those classes from chef because that is exactly where you can learn to do. and it's not hard and it's less expensive hmm. like our food bill is tiny even though my garden's gone <laughs> our food bill is tiny because it's all fruits and vegetables and grains and lentils not grains so much but lentils and beans and that sort of thing our food bill is really really low no milk no cheese i make uh, a vegan cheese with sunflower seeds and nutritional yeast and almond milk that i make myself i don't even buy the almond milk. I buy the almonds. And, and it's so easy to do. All you have to do is take a little bit of time. And after you get used to it, it's not hard, is it? It's not no. hard. And it's it's it's, it, 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 it's it's not hard. And actually, I think um, for, for families, it's getting the children involved in what they're eating. It's getting yes. the, the husbands involved in what they're eating. Chop this up, taste this. Um, and if we get our children involved in the food, yeah, they might they may not chop it the way that we want it chopped. They may not, yeah, you know, it might take time or whatever. But they're if they're involved in the food that they're eating, they're more likely to to eat it. I know when my, my own children were, were younger, if they helped me cook, they would eat it. But if I cooked the same thing and they weren't involved in it, they wouldn't eat it and when you know rebecca and i were actually having a bit of a chuckle the other day because she was looking at something um she was and she said look at this kid well the dog actually it was our dog we feed birds and our, our, our little dog wouldn't eat the same food out of her bowl but she went out and she ate all the foods around me put out for the birds i said well she's just like you because when you were little we put, a, we put a bowl in front of you and you wouldn't eat it but if we put half on our plate, each of it, your father and I would put some, you know, for her on our plate and she would eat it. We, we, we would feed her as if it's coming off your plate, I'd eat it. It's, it's like, it's funny how the same food. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But you're so right about getting them involved and especially if you have a garden. And I know that that it's not really organic and, and I get that even here and actually, especially here because the water's an issue, but, um, if you get them involved in the gardening, it's even better because it's really exciting them for them to pull like a carrot out or whatever, or to pull a tomato right off the plant. That's that's really exciting for them. Yeah, and yeah, children, I, I, we're, we're, they're, they're fed Coke, they're fed Pepsi, they're fed um, <sighs> yeah, all this all this soft drink, and like you can make um, water kefir, and you can 
you know, yeah, it takes a bit of time and a little bit of effort. But what you're putting in there, you, you can, you know, when you do it the second time round, you, it, it will naturally carbonate itself. And you know, the 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 kids can drink drink that. My children were brought up on water, and they used to hate me. They'd say, "Can we have cordial?" No, no. Can we have some coke? No. But you know, every now and again, they get it. The, yeah, I I would soften and go, but they just, you know, even. Now Rebecca says to me, I don't like soft drink and you wouldn't allow us to drink it when we were when we were little. And when my son went the opposite way, he just <laughs> I can do what I like now. I'm 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 an adult. <laughs> he, 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 yeah. He, he, he's a rebel and he'll have to deal with that as he as he as he gets older and, and he ages and that's his the choices that that, that he makes. But um yeah, what exactly. advice would you have for the first signs for women that they may have first signs of, of um, unhealthy brain health. Right. So um, it often happens shortly after menopause, right? We think it's that menopause brain, the the brain fog and the, the lack of ability to concentrate and the sleep issues. And, and people kind of, it, it's kind of masked there often. So I, I would encourage anybody who's going through menopause or is just, going into menopause to kind of really pay attention to things like the ability not being able to sleep that's one big um, danger sign having brain fog forgetting names or the words for things like my mom the first symptom we experienced with her was she couldn't remember the name for like mouse she couldn't remember that um, or or, uh, you know, door, you know, that thing, I need to come in and out of there. And for people who are close to people who are doing things like that, that's something for you to watch too. Because I know mom tried to fake it. She tried to hide it by saying, well, you know, you go on through there. Where she couldn't say, I need to go into the living room or, or go into the living room. She'd say, you know, go on there. And so that's something that we can watch in others. But for ourselves, those little things like, and like say going into a room and not remembering why you go. That was my big thing. When I started realizing that I was having troubles, that was my thing. I was, my office was upstairs. My husband's was in the basement. I, by the time I got down those two sets of stairs, I would forget why I was going down to talk to him. And I'll tell you what, that happened a few times and I got pretty scared because it was after my mom had been diagnosed. So that, that, that was a thing and we say oh it's old timers or it's you know it's part of aging it is not i tell you it is not a normal acceptable part of aging we can age but we do not have to get old and we shouldn't get old so those are symptoms but the sleep is a big thing because it's very circular as well right so if you if for some reason um, you're not able to sleep then your brain gets worse and then you can sleep in even less. Like that's a, that's a symptom of dementia. Early dementia is the inability to sleep, wandering, having trouble with directions. That's another thing. So if you've gone to many place, someplace many times, and then all of a sudden you have a hard time, Oh, I can't remember how to get there or I can't remember how to get back. And, and that's a pretty common thing to have happen or to, to have a, a trouble making an executive decision. So like um, whether to put this money in this account or that account, or um, having being a little bit, having different spending habits than you always had in your life. If all of a sudden you're spending really crazy or all of a sudden you won't spend anything, that means it's a bit, there's a change going on in here. So those are things you need to watch for. Any of those things are symptoms that you should be evaluating what you're eating, how much exercise you're getting, because you need at least 30 minutes a day of exercise, at least five days a week, 150 minutes a week of walking some kind of aerobic exercise. And then um, like, I know you do weight training and that sort yeah. of thing. That's so good for our, our bones. And, and did you know that the stronger your legs, the better your brain? Yeah, because it's, you're, it's a, your calves are also your second heart as well because you need to look after your legs because that pumps all the blood through, 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 exactly. through your legs. That, that would be why you, um, that's – I could be totally wrong why, why it is your, your, your brain no, is – you're right. Because you've got more blood And that's flow. why walking – and that's why walking and dancing 
dancing, if especially if you do like something where it's choreographed or you're you're um, dancing with a partner and you have to match the footsteps, that sort of thing. Anything like that, dancing is really, really good. Firstly, it's cardiovascular. And secondly, it's making your brain make connections that it normally wouldn't have to. So anything like that. So if you find yourself with those little quirky things going on, check out the diet, get rid of anything processed, any sugar, any, you know, if it comes in a box, like just don't even think about it. If it you know, And most frozen stuff is basically the same, a box or a can. The next thing is to, to make sure the exercise, really evaluate your sleep habits, what's going on there. You might be sleeping a long time, but how much are you tossing and turning? Is that really rest? Are you going through all the cycles of sleep? And then um, the other thing is to keep learning. We've heard all about neuroplasticity over the last number of years. It's like the buzzword. And neuroplasticity really does happen, but not from playing brain games. I mean, they will help, but the best thing you can do for neuroplasticity to build new pathways in your brain and to actually help more cells grow because our brains don't stop growing. We still get cells. It used to be thought that we didn't, but we do. But the best thing you can do is keep learning new things. So like even the technology that we have to deal with here or the technology I have to deal with on my webinars or, or my programs, that is all stuff that we have to learn because that's new to us relatively. The thing is to keep learning new things. So if you're a mystery, if you normally like to read mysteries, read something that's not a mystery. You can still read, but read like a technical paper or something about, I don't know, how to fix your car or learn how to fix your car. It's harder now with all the electronic crap, but do something like that. You know, learn how to knit. If you always wanted to learn to knit, knitting is great because you've got to do patterns, the two sides of your brain, a new language, learn a musical instrument, learn to sing. And it doesn't mean you have to be a singer. It just means sing. You know, all of those things and creative things, art, journaling. Yeah, I've taken I've decided now that I'm I'm a wannabe artist, but nobody gets to see it except me, and it only happens in my journal. So I write I I've been journaling is a good good thing to do for everybody. But now in my journals instead of just writing, I'm doing a little sketching. I never did that before, but it's something new for me. And it's just it's it's exploring a creative part of me that I never really explored before. So I encourage women especially to do that. Because we, even though we'll talk with each other and we'll share fears and stories, we're more likely to do that than men, yeah? yeah? But there are some things we can't even talk about with others, but in a journal, in our, in our drawing or whatever, or sculpting or whatever it is you decide to do, we can let out those feelings, those fears, those hopes, those dreams that we might not be ready to share anywhere else, but we can do it in a journal. So that's important. So those are my main things that I like to see people do, everybody do, but women especially. Yeah, that, and that's great advice that you've given there, given there Kate. And um, for me, when you're talking about dancing, it's quite funny because I bought a FX um, dance uh, online um, <coughs> exercise um, routine. And Rebecca and I did a little bit of it this morning and it was just so much fun. And we're like, you know, because it was, it, the exercise is through, like this is through Latin dance and through stuff that we ah. wouldn't and do, but it's teaching you how to swing your hips and, and a whole host of things to get for, for exercise and cardiovascular. And it's, it's you can do it at home. You might like, I don't have a partner to dance with, but I can put this thing up on the screen and who's going to see me, whether you're doing it right or whatever. Doesn't but matter. Do, does, it doesn't matter. And, you know, we... We, we we were we were having a bit of a giggle to ourselves because trying to get our hips to move and and and, and then the hands to move at the same time and then you know, the, trying to do the feet like where it stomps like a bull and it's just like oh it's hilarious but we could see the funny side of it whereas when we can laugh at ourselves and we didn't take it too mm. seriously we're like oh this is going to be a bit of a journey where we either we may never become get get expert at it but we're we're exercising and uh, yes. yeah I'm, I'm taking up photography because i've always wanted to do it oh. and it's something that um I, I wanted to be a photographer when i was um younger 
but it wasn't something that was allowed. So um, I'm going to um, to do that um, now. And yeah, I've always wanted to learn photography, and so I've got I've bought a camera a few a few months, a couple of months ago for the for our business, and. I'm going to use it and get out there and start um, taking photos. Um, just my photos, nobody else has to see them. They're just, that's just right. me. and that's okay. And you know, it's 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 what we do for us. And sometimes we have these, um, like when I was younger, I was told I couldn't draw, so you don't do it because you're not good at it. So so we hide that back, and that little memory come comes out that we're not good at it but we can draw in our own little we don't have to show anybody you know it's it's doing it for you and for what for what makes you happy and to be able yeah. to express it to, to be able to express it out and i think that's really really important that we 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 do that and take the time for our own for our own mental health and our own brain health, but um, more importantly, when we look after ourselves and every and we're happy, then everybody else around us is 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 happy too. And that's what we sometimes forget that we are emanating out and getting back in return what what we're pushing, what we're putting out there. So um, and we often don't don't see it. True enough. I'm so glad. I, I love it. I'm going to have to check out that dancing thing because I love yeah. to dance. And it's, yeah, yeah, I'll um, my husband. <laughs> it's, I've got it up here. So it's called Body FX. Body FX. Like um, just the letters FX? I'll put it in the, I'll put it in this, um, in the yeah. chat. Oh, and, cool. And yeah, that's, and it, I think it cost me, oh, it was about, 67 Australian dollars. I think it's 47 US. Um, oh, perfect. Oh, Body yeah. FX TV. I think I've seen the ads for that. Cool. Yeah. So <laughs> that's, um, and it's just like, yeah, I saw that. It's all to do with the figure eight and, and it's all through your hips and your arms and, and that, and you can just put it up on the screen. And yeah, I bought it to do a bit more, to help lose, lose a bit more weight and get the cardio up a little bit more. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and it's also going to help with my, my brain health because it's going to make me laugh because when I go and do my workouts, I'm normally swearing at the trainer because it's... <laughs> <laughs> but, but do, laughing, laughing, you're, you're so right about that, laughing. It's so important. Joy, joy. I remember my Oma saying to me, nothing else matters except joy because if you don't have joy in your heart, then nothing else matters. And... No. You know, it's 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 good for our brains too. That's uh, like some kind of a contemplative practice to be joyful, to be to have gratitude, to help others. And you're doing that in spades. My goodness, look at all the time you're spending getting information out to to people. That's those those things where we help others, where we have gratitude and joy and and laugh. Oh my gosh, yeah, those are the that's the. I think almost as important as the diet and exercise because we have to have the mindset to also be healthy. Yeah. And yeah. And, and thank you for, for, for saying, you know, like we're getting so much information out to people because that's what we're here in this great time for. So if we're all prepared to step up and mm -hmm. actually voice, we'll, we're always looked after. And there's one thing that um, since COVID came in at the beginning of the year, well, basically the beginning of the year sort of, uh, is that, you know, when we let go, when I let go of, oh, what about my business? What about this? What about money? And, and all of that, because I'm, I'm I'm single and I've still got bills and it, nothing. <laughs> we've been abundantly looked after in, in, in ways that I never, ever thought um, uh -huh was possible and it's just like and the support that we've got and it's just like people are saying well how are you getting through it I'm just like it's just just let go of that what we can make the amount of money that we can make out of the situation and I think that's the difference between those that are thriving and those that aren't thriving is especially in business is because if you take it and you think that you can make money out of it and turn it into um, something off of somebody else's um, misfortune, karma comes around. Whereas if you, <laughs> if you just go out there and say, this is what's happening, this is what I'm sharing, grab your information, just like today, take the information that Kate's put out there and that I've shared, 
grab it, find what resonates, what the truth is, your truth, not saying that what we've said isn't true because it's our truth, but take it, find out what your truth is and 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 that's it. Nobody is right or, or has got all the answers. If you're looking for somebody to give you all the answers, then you, you're giving your power away. You don't want to take responsibility. Uh, take responsibility, find all the information, gather the information in, lay it out on the table and see what works for you. And, and that's all we're asking on, on, on Brain Health. Um, Kate's got a book out. Um, where can people get your book, Kate? Yeah, it's, it's an ebook right now. It'll be print in October, but it's everywhere on Amazon. So don't let the memories fade. It's on Amazon on all platforms that Amazon has. And um, it was it was written to honor my mother um, and to help make sure that I get as much information as I can out to people so that nobody else has to go that way. My, my biggest dream in life is that dementia and Alzheimer's were rare, rare diseases. I'm just putting that up here um, and so people, I'm just going to find it in the in the screen, if it's, it'll come yeah. up soon. Um, there's the cover, yeah. the cover, there's a little picture on it and that picture was my mom and I when I was about seven months old and it was taken by my dad and every time he looks at that picture he starts to cry of course because because mom was gone but that was um i had to have that incorporated in the cover somehow <laughs> and where can they find you kate i will um also put that in um once we've um finished um where can people find you if they want to be part of your group and do some group work because you because after all you are a global platform everybody yeah we we all are just at katekunkel.com there i've got a blog which oh please go visit the blog there's so much information there while i was writing the book i would take information and put it on the blog when i would find something i felt was really important i put it on the blog so i invite everybody to 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 learn what you can from that as well but it's just katekunkel.com very easy okay i'm just going to see if we've got no it's not in your that i don't have your I've got your Facebook. People can find you. So I'll oh yes, that, absolutely. Yeah. Um, while we're while we're chatting, is there anything else you'd like to share with the viewers before we go? Well, I'm putting. I'm not being rude. I'm I'm present. I'm just wanting no, to get that's your okay. <laughs> Thank you. No, just if um, once you get to katekunkel.com, or yeah, actually even I think also on my Facebook page, there's a little button to click, and if you click on it, you can get five steps you can do right now to look after your brain. I put a little PDF together and it's just five really easy things so that you don't have to remember everything I just kind of spewed out just now. But it's five easy things you can do. And, and if you do that, you'll also get on my mailing list. And I don't mail out a lot. I don't believe in that. I don't like spamming people. But um, I will send you out stuff if something really important comes up some kind of an important uh, way to prevent um, dementia or some treatment that's just new. I, I do let people know about that. So you can get the, the cool little PDF and then I can stay in touch with you as well. And I've just put all Kate's information up um, here. Thank you. So there, there, there it is there. And um, Kate's um, where well, you can find her on Facebook. So go back through the thread. It's down the end. Um, you can see it there. You can click on that and connect with Kate. Well, it's been amazing chatting with you. Lovely to be able to see you face to face. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, much better. <laughs> and we, 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 got it, we got it working. Um, and, yeah, we, we'll pop, we might do this again Um when um, um, Adair may have some questions because um, she had to run because um, she's got a lot her own like couple of live shows that she she okay. does and you know in this in this important time and great time of change you know it's 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 the first step that we can do is to look after ourselves and live in the now and you might be thinking well there's nothing I can do about this but what can you do to change something right now and when we worry about the past, we can't change that and the future isn't guaranteed. So start working on the now and it's never too late to create change in your life. It's never, you know, medical experts and everything will tell you that, you know, it's terminal or it's just part of ageing as, as Kate says. But, you know, before this was, you know, in 
we, if we go look and we truly go back the generations and the different, you know, thousands of years, this didn't exist. This, these diseases that we, we, we have in our modern world didn't exist. So it has to be something that was has been brought into the modern world because it didn't exist um, just two generations ago before our, before my grandmother, you know, my great grandmother lived to be 90, you know, and wow. there's, she was 90, 94, my great grandmother was. Um, so, yeah, and my own mother's in her, she's she's 87, I think, this year or 88 this year. So, you know, we we can live long lives and but we have to eat healthy. We have to exercise. We have to take care of ourselves, but just not um, what we eat mentally. And it's, there's, there's a whole thing around that. And as people that follow me know, I say, get rid of your shit in your head because this is the most expensive space let alone the shit you put in here get rid of the shit between here clear that out and until you create and you can do that but until you create change because it's like and, and i'm sure kate will agree with me that even physically you can start to eat healthy and you think yeah yeah i've done it yeah i'm getting better but if you start putting that shit back in all, you've undone all that good work. It's the same with our mental health and what we hang on to. If we clear that out and then we put more shit back in, it's like a set of pipes. The plumber can only drain your pipes, but if you keep filling it up with shit, they're going to clog again. Yeah. <laughs> good analogy. <laughs> it's been amazing having you on the show and I look forward to, um, to having you on again. And, um, yeah, viewers, please contact Kate. If you know anyone that's suffering from Alzheimer's or, you know, this is you're talking to somebody who's been been through this, um, has seen it with her own mother, is really pas passionate about helping other women and even not, just not women, it'll be men as well that will get value out of this. But remember, as women, we're the core of the family unit. We're the core of what, how, how, you know, if we start doing things, then our family start taking notice of what we're doing and, and then they follow. So as I like to say, we're the captain of our, our ship. So you can either steer it in whichever way you choose to steer it. You can steer it in what you think and believe because you're hearing it on television or people are telling you or you can take control of it and say, I might take a different direction and steer it through this way and have a look at different paths as I navigate for my own health and for my own own good and then of my family perfect what a good way to uh say good night very very good <laughs> very nice we'll see you all next week i look forward to seeing you next week i'm not quite i think i've got bob or i'm not sure who i'm talking to next week but it'll be around depression or something to look after yourselves with um so thank you so much kate um for joining me thank this you. morning here i know it's night time where you are my, my, my pleasure. Take care. care.